the camera the wrong way. There it is. All right. Welcome. Clone Questions Live, episode nine. Let me adjust this light here. There we go. Episode nine. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining. Clone Questions Live, episode nine. We're going to dive into the last couple of reels that I made, the purple stems and the scraping. There was a lot of, lot of interaction, a lot of comments on there, um, a lot of thoughts on, you know, on that insight there on scraping your clones and, and cutting purple clones. I mean, obviously, guys, these are little snippets, little clips. Um, it doesn't paint the whole perspective. Uh, it doesn't paint... Um, you know, the whole picture there. So there's a lot of little nuances that people will assume that I'm leaning towards one way or another, but you know, I'm not. And there's a lot of things to factor in. So, you know, that's, that's the reality of it, but we'll, we'll dive into it a little bit more today. I want to, I want to um, clarify some things and just, um, elaborate a bit more on the, um, scraping your stems and the cutting purple, purple clones. Um, cause I got a lot of, a lot of feedback there, but if you're just joining a couple things, if you're, if you're first time here, um, we do a game every single live so I could give away a free copy of, um, some of the SOPs that I have on my website, clonecoach.com. So we're going to play a little guess the number game here, random number game. Um, and also if you're just joining in or if you're joined in right now in the Instagram, let us know where you're joining in from. In the chat there, put a, put where you're joining in from. It's a good way to get a perspective on the uh, how big and how the, the, the reach that the Clone Coach team uh, gets right there. So if you're just joining in, let us know where you're joining in from. Let me put a, put a comment here so we could get our game going. So we got New York. We got Bozeman, Montana. Western New York, Clear Lake, California, Florida. Let's see here. Pick a number between 1 and 420 usually does it for a free copy of the Mother Plant SOP. Let me put that there. Enter that, that guess in the chat here see where else we got people joining in from we got Oregon we got Richmond Wisconsin we got uh, Adams Massachusetts Michigan Boston San Diego Toledo Ohio of course Toledo Indoor Garden as a reminder it's on the calendar it's on the books I'm going to be going flying out to Toledo Indoor Garden um, in Toledo Ohio to do uh, an episode of clone questions live there in combination with, you know, more in-depth kind of, um, you know, just cloning discussion and ideally, you know, get a lot of value put out there. But I was invited by the, the great folks over at Toledo Indoor Garden to go and uh, join them and help share some more knowledge. So look out for that, everybody. That's coming soon. We got, uh, we got Trinidad, New Jersey, Vegas. Dan Nugler is from Earth. Same as everybody else here. Let's see here. See, the first question here, the Uncle Kush, what is your SOP for hardening off before sticking cuts? So I don't do anything extra when it comes to hardening off my stems prior to um, prior to plugging them, prior to sticking them. So when I cut them off the mother plant, I, I hold them in a solution. That's something I do do so they don't dry out and begin to wilt. So I put my stems in a solution be it the same solution that I pre-soaked my cubes in, be it a light dose of, of zero tall, something like that. Um, I don't like to do just like plain RO water because there's, there's nothing in there to benefit the plant. And um, the, the stems will sit in that solution until they're ready to get plugged. So that's just in the same environment as a bedroom, as a clone room, whatever that is. Um, but beyond that, you know, I'm not leaving them purposefully for an extended period of time um, in a different environment or anything like that to quote, harden them off before sticking. So good question there, Uncle Kush. We got we got Wisconsin. There's going to be a lot of uh, 
a lot of numbers to to go through here at the end of this episode uh to try to find our winners um let's see here wisconsin where i probably can't even listen to this legally why not man is it that bad i mean it's just you're just listening i'm not doing nothing too bad over here you know but we got colorado we got michigan as well let's see we got another question and if you're just hopping in today i am smoking some uh some crew pre-roll alpha blue sativa dominant good flavor good smoke I was at the dispensary picking up some edibles and uh, figured I'd grab myself a little pre-roll container. A little something different. It helps me, you know, mix mix things up a little bit. But if you're puffing on something, it's time to light it up. Let's see here. Question from, uh, what does that say? Stuart Osterwell? Oster Wild, something like that. In rock wool, after just rooting, when slash how often do you water till runoff? Trying to balance getting dry backs with getting some runoff. After just rooting, are you talking about like a four inch or six inch cube? Or are you talking about like the, the uh, you know, rooting cube, like a one and a half or a two inch? Um, but when they're fully rooted on a small, you know, cloning plug, you know, at that point, you know, they're no more than two days they'll go without watering it usually ends up being daily um that's a full saturation um but if you're talking about runoff then i assume you're talking about you know a a bigger cube um let's see how often do you water to a runoff I'm trying to balance getting dry backs and getting some runoff you got to play with it it depends on the size of the plant um obviously the bigger that it gets the more you could saturate that media but you know, if you're running rock wool, you really want to put effort into creating um, or, or, you know, implementing an irrigation strategy um, that that is fact that is using sensors. So you could see your dry backs and the percentages and start looking at graphs and charts, things like that. That is where you're going to get the most out of your rock wool and veg and moving forward. Um, if you're just hand watering to run off and stuff, it's not really the 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 ideal situation because even if you're if you're hand watering a rock wool cube and it's not all going to penetrate it's going to it's going to flow off to the sides and stuff so you want drippers and you want an irrigation strategy and ideally sensors so that you can monitor that dry back and that runoff good question though expert thg says what's your opinion on slow nickel clone tech and have you heard of it i've heard of it he, I mean, I can't access his page because he blocked me, so I don't have any insight on it, man. But I know my clone tech, and uh, I know my SOPs, and I know everybody on the clone coach team is getting crazy good results. They're making the best clones ever with my SOPs. So why don't you check that out at clonecoach.com. Toledo Indoor Garden says, can't wait, bro. We appreciate you, and the community is lucky to have you. Thank you. Costa Rica, Bonfire CBD, great support there. I appreciate you. Let me let me uh, let me keep scrolling down here on this chat. You know, I get a little bit behind on the chat because I'm trying to read line by line as they keep coming in, and I usually eh, usually I get to everything by the end of the show, which is about an hour long. So, but if you're just joining too, let us know where you're joining in from um, in the chat here. See, Hard Money Sniper says, how do I use Zerotol 2.0 in cloning? Good question. So I use it on, you know, the mother plants prior to cutting so that my, my stems are clean. And that's, you know, that's a normal procedure with, with Zerotol and the mother plants. But the actual cloning, it starts with the initial dunk. So I get all my stems. I get my bouquet of stems um, and I dunk and wash them in a zero tall solution usually 15 mils per gallon up to 30 mils per gallon for that full saturation 100 percent coverage on my stems wash and clean that out so that the stems going into the uh, rooting process are going in as clean as possible from there on out i am doing preventative sprays on my stems um, once again at a rate of about 15 mils up to 30 mils per gallon um, 
daily or every other day, I am spraying slash misting the bottom of my stems, the top of the foliage, and like the tops of the cubes to prevent algae. And you're really just on the preventative end of things. You're preventing algae, you're preventing pathogen pressure, you're preventing any kind of mold, anything like that. Um, so that's really how I use Zero Tall 2.0 during the cloning. Good question. Let's see here, Travis Neff says, if you get clones sent to you and the tops are all brown, what causes that? If the nodes are brown, then um, there's it's it's usually just dying off because of excess humidity, excess moisture. Um, how they were sent to you, I don't know how long it took, what the life was like prior, so many variables. But if your nodes are browned out and dead, there is too much moisture on those nodes and they died. The moisture stays uh, uh, trapped on that little really, really fragile node growth and it just, it kills it. It browns it out and it's dead. So the best way to prevent that is, um, you know, letting the plants breathe and, um, you know, listening to that zero tall tech that I just mentioned in that previous question. Let's see here. If you guys are just joining, let us know where you're joining in from. If you want to win a free copy of the Mother Plant SOP, enter your guess between 1 and 420 in the chat here on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's not live on YouTube. It's live on Instagram every Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, join us there. Follow me on Instagram, Clone Coach. Let's see here. Hello from the high desert. Hello, East Bay. Let's see here. See, Dan Nugler 80 says, using Clonex in a squirt bottle on Floriflex foam plugs seems to just absorb into the foam. I think it'll be better to dip the stems instead. That's what you think? Give it a shot, man. I mean, with the uh, foam plugs and Oasis foam plugs or, or Floriflex foam, foam, foam plugs, um, the holes are usually you know a little bit more defined, so there's less chance of the stem of the gel coming off of the stem as you plug it into the hole. So you're, you may be right in that sense with those, with those foam plugs, the hole and the stem size, uh, may be the right ratio where that, where the gel doesn't really come off of the stem as you plug it in. Um, but you know, it's going to absorb into the, to the nearby media around the stem, no matter what, where else is it going to go? But the good thing is your stems right there too. So, there's really no negative effect with it absorbing near and around the stem. See, Cholo Baby says, yo, can I ask you a question? Can you just give me a job, please? Thanks. Can't. Not handing out jobs. I'm trying to create my own business, my own, my own, uh, my own thing going on here. I don't, I'm not at the higher employees stage yet. I'm, I would say you know, a little ways away from that little ways away but you know that's that's the goal one day I, I will be able to uh you know hire people and shit now that, that day would be really cool let's see here and my clone says can you root a plant already six weeks into bloom you can i've seen it done i mean i've seen it done on clones you know on on a plant that's already eight weeks into bloom two weeks into bloom it doesn't matter you're just going to have to deal with that excess moisture affecting that really fragile uh, flower, right? You know, and prevent prevent mold build up that way, prevent the botrytis with that excess humidity. So you can. Is it going to be a little bit more tricky? I, I think so. Um, but, you know, what other people do, instead of doing that, they um, just go the re-veg route. So they'll kind of harvest their tops, harvest what they can off of that plant. And then re-veg that plant, put that plant right back into vegetative state, and with time it'll re-veg and grow back new vegetative growth, and then it's just much easier to clone that. Um, because if you do clone a branch off of a flowering plant, you're gonna need to take that that stem and through a re-veg process anyways, which I believe would be a little bit tougher um, and a longer process if you started from a clone rather than you know the full size plant. Let's see here. El de los tricomas. Tricomas, huh? 
Is that, is that how you say trichomes in Spanish? Um, you got a deal on the SOP? I do. So there's, um, you can use discount code 15K, 15K for 50 bucks off your entire order at clinicoach.com. Um, if you do buy the bundle, there should be a discount that gets automatically applied there. Um, my on-site coaching right now is discounted as well. So um, yeah, there's there definitely some, some deals and discounts on there. Let's see, uh, birds o' feather for feather, something like that. It says, what are you drinking today? He's from the OKC. I'm drinking uh, some watered down cranberry apple juice. No alcohol, no alcohol in it. Let's see here. I mean, I'm really just a social drinker. I don't, I don't really drink alcohol just to, you know, have it, especially by myself for my own little drink. Socially, yeah, it's great. It's cool. Makes it a little bit more funner. Um, but like, you know, daily or nightly or anything like that. Nah, this though, this is my vice. We all have our vices. This is my vice. This is daily and all the time. But let's talk purple stem clones. We're going to, I'm going to skip a few questions here. Cause I really want to talk about these purple stemmed clones. Um, let me open up my Instagram page here on my laptop and start looking at some comments. Come on. Where's the comments? Why can't I see it? Maybe it's because I have the screen shortened down. Um, but either way, cutting purple clones, purple stemmed clones. People are like, you could always bring a clone back. You could always bring the clone back. Don't say you can't. You're, you're giving out wrong information. Um, of course, with this plant, you could always bring it back with enough time, care, effort, proper nutrition, proper environmentals. Of course you can. This plant is a magical thing. It's very, very uh, malleable and uh, it's quick acting, fast acting. So whatever implement, uh, things you put into it, you'll see that reaction fairly soon. So of course you could bring back a clone that is purple. And in the video I said you could, it will root still. It's not like it won't root, but in that time frame of rooting, that's the best it's gonna be. It's gonna be purple and yellow, you know, if it started off that way. Can you come back from that? Sure, but you are adding time to your schedule. You're adding time to your vegetative uh, calendar to bring that clone back to health. I don't know about you, but shaving off time in my vegetative state is preferred over bringing back a clone. That's why I, you know, responded and, you know, my mentality is make sure your moms are good. If you could bring back a clone, why don't you just put that effort and energy into your mother stock prior to cloning so that you start with green clones and you could keep them green and you gain the extra week or two of vegetative growth after it's rooted versus trying to bring back this plant from poor, you know, looking uh, health. Just get it done prior so that you have, so that you gain a week or two of growth and not spend a week or two trying to bring back this purple clone to a green state. There was a lot of feedback like that. We're like, you know, Paul, clone coach, you're, you know, that's incorrect. You know, you could always bring back a clone. I started with purple clones and I brought it back. Of course you can. Of course you can. But you also spent time, resources, energy, money to do so. And that adds up. In a flower situation, if you could shave off a week or two of vegetative growth, when you throw that into the whole year, you're squeezing in that extra harvest. That extra, you know, that one, you know, that 5.5 or that five harvest, those five turns per year. That's how you really hit it. If you're spending time bringing back these, these clones to a good state, you lost a week or two of growth. That, that plant could have been thriving. No development could have been uh, getting bigger, better, stronger. Side branches could have been going. You could have topped earlier. All of these things. So when it comes to these purple stem clones, my thoughts, my opinions, Put that effort into your mother stock prior and then keep it green with the SOPs that I have. I'll keep that same green growth, the same momentum, and I'll kick it right back into the same vegetative growth and momentum that it was 
prior to cloning. So that, what do you do? You gain a week or two of growth. Um, how to address purple plants on your mother plant, uh, purple stems on your mother plants. So usually, genetics aside, right? There's always outliers and genetic traits and things like that. Genetics aside, if that plant has the potential to be solid green, if you're under LED, you're going to have this trouble a bit more often where you're, um, you're experiencing purple stems, um, whether that be striped or solid purple, what have you. So those LEDs require, when you're growing under LEDs, you require just a lot more nutrients. Why that is, you know, what that really, you know, what, what specific ones, of course, people are going to say like phosphorus and stuff, but you know, I just bring up my base level nutrients because it has everything in it, right? So instead of trying to, you know, increase one individual nutrient at a time or anything like that, I just increase my base nutrients and ensure I have enough, you know, um, calcium, magnesium, if I am also using uh, reverse osmosis water, reverse osmosis water, I will create a, a base, some sort of buffer with the CalMag and then have increased base nutrients. Um, and that usually does a trick. Once again, assuming that your root zone is there to handle the uptake and handle the growth. Because if you're overwatering, you're not going to have the root zone development. You're not that that root zone's not gonna be able to uptake that increased EC that you're that you're feeding to try to combat these um, uh, purple stems. So there's a bit more to it, right? It's assuming that you have a healthy root zone. It's assuming that you're not overwatering. It's assuming that your environmentals are where they need to be and they're consistent. And then, yeah, you could increase your base nutrients um, and address that purple stem. I was just at the on-site coaching up in Sacramento, and they have LED lights there for their moms. And when we first put the LEDs in, my previous visit, um, you know, even prior to installing, I was like, look, we're going to need to increase the EC. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Sure enough, we threw them in. Plants were, 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 were stunted, shocked. We made that adjustment. We even increased it slightly more in this last visit. And these plants are thriving. That, that little bit of purple is going away. And that little bit of purple was at the top, the bottom up, solid green, that newest growth with the most um, kind of demand for nutrients and like the, the, the last spot of the nutrients making its way up to the top. Um, it was a little bit purple, but I just got a video today, a video clip. And, um, you know, the increase in, in uh, base nutrients um, really addressed that. And now we have, you know, everything's praying and happy. And we're going to be cloning those mother plants for the first time on my next visit. So super exciting stuff. But, um, yeah, that's, I hope, helps uh, elaborate a bit more on the, the, the purple stems and, you know, uh, you know, all that feedback and comments um, on the post, which I love. This is a conversation, you know, I... I'm never one to assume that I know everything or that I'm done learning. Never. That's not me. I will always continue learning. I will always, um, you know, be open-minded to other other thoughts, other techniques, other other insights. Because um, it's the smart way to go, really. So let's see here. Let me keep scrolling down. I don't know how far back I am in the chat, but... Let's see here. We got Toronto in the house, Illinois, New Mexico. If you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, once again, you got to join Fridays, 5.30 p.m. Pacific on my Instagram page so you could join the chat here. Let's see here. And for everybody watching, you could watch the full episodes um, at two places, on my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. Under my profile, there's a little tab that says series, um, and you can click that. You'll see Clone Questions Live series, and you have all of the episodes um, right there for you. Let's see here. Travis Allen says, root inoculant recommendations for a home grower. Thinking about Regalia or TerraGrow. Well, those are two different things. Your TerraGrow is a root inoculant. Regalia is a biofungicide. So they're not the same things. 
If you're looking for root inoculant recommendations for a home grower, it would depend on your size of, of grow, right? And your budget and stuff. Um, but basically you wanna look for the endo and ecto mycorrhizae uh, beneficial fungi. And ideally it's a complete uh, inoculant in the sense that it also has humic acids, kelps, molasses, um, food for those microbes as well. That's my preference is a more complete inoculant versus just individual um, strains of beneficial bacteria or anything like that. That's my preference because then you don't have to also you know, buy something else to add that. It all comes complete and formulated already. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of options out there from, you know, on the cheapest end cost wise, probably Fox Farm and um, uh, maybe like the like the Orca. I don't know the pricing. Obviously, everybody's pricing is different. Um, things like that on the expensive end. Um, you know, advanced nutrients or Terra Grow, um, recharge, and the, all of these things come in different sizes. So, and they're fairly concentrated. So, if you're a home grower, you just got to find what's what's in your budget and look for something that's complete. Um, the Regalia is great as a biofungicide for foliar sprays, um, for some root drenching too. Terra Grow is a complete um, root inoculant, which is my preference for uh, for root drenches and root inoculants. Let's see here. What do we got? CZ Ups. CZ Ups 82 says, Hey Paul, have you ever transplanted rockwool cubes into in, in the soil for mothers? If so, what's a good water and practice for them? I feel like rock you, rock roll cubes don't soak up the moisture in the soil. I mean, I've put rock wool into cocoa. And I don't do soil, but we're going to call it cocoa. Um, and I've seen plenty of other people do that where they even take the four inch cube and they put it into the, you know, cocoa medium with really no issue. Um, I mean, as far as like good water practice, once again, if you're in Rockwell cubes, four, six inch, you're usually in drippers already. And from what I've seen, you just continue that process. You're just, you're putting the cube either in or on top of the cocoa medium and it just continues to grow that way. Um, just as if you were put it into another on top of another rock wool slab, right? The roots just continue to growing if there's moisture there. So I'm not really sure, you know, what you're experiencing there, um, you know, because there really shouldn't be any issue. It should absorb water just as it was um, previously. Let's see here. Pax underscore one says VPD dome tech coming. Three three hundred in there and didn't have great results because issues with humidity, etc. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Once again, um, I haven't tried the VPD dome yet, and I don't have a room pumping right now, so I don't have a place to do R and D. So I gotta get uh, another room pumping strictly for R and D. Um, I used to keep rooms pumping for the market, but the markets took a turn, and uh, costs have gone up. So. I turned it off for a bit, but if I do bring it back up, it's really going to be for, for research and development. Let's see here. Who knows how far down I am in the chat here, but let me keep scrolling. And if you're just joining us, let us know where you're joining in from in the chat. If you're curious about grabbing either of the SOPs, I recommend both of the SOPs on clonecoach.com, the best mother plants ever and the best clones ever SOP, you could use discount code 15K for 50 bucks off your entire order. And if you buy that package, uh, the bundle of both of the SOPs, then I, while supplies last, I'll be able to ship you a free case of iHort trays, which is what I prefer to use, you know, up until now. I really haven't found anything else that, um, I found some other things, but I haven't gotten access to them. But that's like my favorite uh, tray right now. It's pre-filled media. It's cocoa peat based media. So it breaks down. Um, it, it, it degrades down. It's not like rock wool. And it comes pre-filled. So you save a bunch of time and labor filling in all those individual cubes. So grab both of the guides at uh, clonecoach.com and I'll ship you a free case of trays. Let's see here. Bomb Buds 
Entertainment says, What if not all clones are rooted by day 14? How many days more will you give rest of clones? I wouldn't accept it. Go to clonecoach.com, grab the best clones ever guide, and you won't have this problem anymore. But how many more days? I mean, it's going to be less than a week for sure. Um, and if things aren't rooting by then, you could break open a cube and see what stage they made it to, whether they've even formed a callus, which is the first stage, whether they've struck root from the callus, which is the second stage, um, and, to, and then third stage, they're fully rooted, which are the ones that you have visible roots on outside the cube. But if you're not rooting, you got some issues, probably temperature or, or, hum, or humidity issues. Try to warm up that root zone, encourage that striking and that rooting. Um, if the clones are still rigid, then there's some hope. Um, if they're not rigid, then I, would, I wouldn't put too much effort into them. Um, but give them a few more days and, and adjust something to encourage that striking and rooting. Um, if you don't do anything, then what result do you expect? Owen Roots. Coach, are you going to switch nutrients and try crop salt anytime soon? I'm eyeing you, man. We met at the event. I remember you. I appreciate you. We were going to meet at the event. We never got to it. But I appreciate you. Um, and I'm eyeing crop salt. I'm eyeing everything that's out there, right? Um, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of good things out there. And, um, you know, when it comes to brands... There's there's some options, so you know, I see you, I see you, crop salt, I see you. Let me keep scrolling down here. We're gonna have a lot of comments to go through to to find our winning number. And uh, if there's multiple winners, then there's multiple winners. Last week there was three winners, and the fourth winner sent me a DM with a screenshot with uh, their entry that I that I missed as I was scrolling through. I'm only human. But saw, shot me a DM, saw it, acknowledged it, got him a discount code. Four people won last week. Which, if that keeps happening, I think I'm going to have to increase the number of uh, the guessing range. You know, more, more, you know, higher number than 420. And hopefully, ideally, as more people join the live, you know, I'll need to do that because there'll be so many, so many comments there. Let's see here. CM Gillette 13 says, how do you feel about LED lights for clones? And how long do you suggest keeping the clones away from light after plugging, if at all? How do you feel about LED lights for clones? I like the four foot single, you know, single strip LED lights um, for cloning, which is usually about a 20 watt, 18 watt um, equivalent um, LED light. I put two of those over four domes, um, over a four by two, you know, area canopy. And um, I love it. I like it. You could probably even go one more if you have a little bit increased height. You could probably go three strips. And or if you really want to, like, do some, like, pre-veg or hardening off underneath that. Um, but, like, normal, what well, we would say normal full-size LED lights that are, like, 300 watts and stuff for clones. Nah, no thank you. Or even some of those, like, a, I've seen some, like, the razors and, like, the adjustable, like, clone lights that are LEDs um, that I just, I just didn't like either. I don't think the plants liked it. And uh, how long do you suggest keeping the clones away from light after plugging, if at all? I don't keep the light away. Uh, I plug them, and they're in a 24-hour light from there on out. Let's see here. Fifteen to thirty seems high compared to the concentration suggested in the pamphlet. That's exactly what it um, what Zero Tall says in the pamphlet, um, which is a one to one hundred or a one to two fifty ratio of solution. So I'm not sure, man. Read 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 that through again. Let's see here. If you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from. I'm making my way through the chat right now. Um, I'm a little bit behind because uh, I was talking about um, purple stemmed clones and cutting purple stemmed clones and I elaborated a bit more on that. But I'm catching up here. I'm catching up. And I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes of Clone Questions Live. 
Um, I'm enjoying them. Let's see here. At least question. What's the best way that you bring mother plants purple stems? I talked about purple stems and mother plants. This question may be a bit old already. El de los tricomas says, what temp you have in domes? Low 80s. Fahrenheit, just in case. We got Louisiana, but you called it Louisiana bis. <laughs> touchdown TD, Tito, touchdown Tito, Louisiana bis. Let's see here. Touchdown Tito says, if a plant has stress, you still come from, you still clone from that, but not seen damping off, just slow root. In your experience, do you see the clones bounce back to mother potential? Yeah. I've, I mean, I've seen some really bad clones bounce back into, you know, full potential if they have everything that they need. Um, but we touched on that earlier. You know, if you don't have the option to address your mother plants prior to cloning, um, then you could always bring it back, that plant health back. But ideally, if you do have the mothers, address that first. Let's see here. Have you ever had issues with humidity domes adding moisture to your medium in the first few days of your clone process, even when the vents are open? Pacific Roots Cannabis. No. You shouldn't. I think that's a that's a good question. Um, adding moisture to your medium in the first few days with the vents open? No. See, like, I'm trying to imagine where you're at, right? Like, what would cause that? Only a room... That's like, if the room is above 75% humidity or at least 75% humidity and you add a dome, even with the vents open, you're going to be adding about 25 points worth of humidity. So, and if, if you could see the, the moisture adding to your medium, that means your medium was dry to begin with because a fully saturated medium to begin the rooting process in the first week is not going to have a major dry back. So I'm trying to figure out that picture you're painting there, whether it was like increased lights that's drying off, uh, increased heat or light that's drying off the top of the plugs, but the excess moisture is adding moisture to your plugs. I don't really see it, man, but it shouldn't be happening. Pacific Roots Cannabis. Let's see here. Let me keep scrolling down. If you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from. The Heat Flamingo, did you pick a number already? No, I pick a number at the end of the show, which is uh, around uh, 620. I give myself like 10 minutes to go through all of the, the comments and, and, and uh, try to find all the winners there. And I go back because it's closest without going over. So I've got to see who's getting close, who's getting close. I keep notes of them and then go through everything and then go back to those people that we, you know that I saw as I scrolled through. So it takes a minute. Let's see here. Let me keep scrolling down, see if we got any more questions. I'm a little bit behind on the chat. So, but I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Is it you? You know, thank you. Let's see here. We got a lot of guesses. A lot of guesses. A lot of guesses. Um, for the uh, free copy of the Mother Plan SOPs. And like I said, guys, if, if you guys are on the fence, everybody out there is getting results. They're, I mean, people be inspired to switch their business model to a nursery business model because they now have, they now have the tools and the guide and the coaching to give them the confidence to produce a lot of quality clones on a consistent basis. That's what I'm able to provide in my coaching, in my SOPs um, on clonecoach.com. So if you guys are on the fence about it, you won't be disappointed. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You'll join hundreds of others all over the world that with this piece of information and me as a sounding board for questions, comments, coaching, they get the best clones ever. So if you're on the fence about it, don't be Go to clonecoach.com and snag yourself and join the team because everybody that joins, when they reach out, ask them, what's well, the first thing that I tell them? I say, welcome to the team because this is a team. This is a clone coach team right here. So 
Uh, you know, and I'm the coach. You guys are the heroes. You guys are the star players. Um, and I'm here to to guide you in the right direction, be a sounding board, give you the give you the playbook to go and execute the plays, and you know, and score the goal, score the points, whatever analogy you want to use. American Flower, where can we get the SOPs? Just joined. Sorry, that was a little bit a bit ago, but clonecoach.com. That's where you could get it. Like I said, I'm a little bit behind on the chat, but it's okay, guys. Let's see here, own roots, crop salt, best nutrients in the game. Let's see here, you need clone coaching, bro. Let me go through here. Yep, always leave room for more learning. Absolutely. Let's see here. RO water for cloning, yes or no? As a base water, sure. Are you going to need to add things to it? 100%. So, RO water with nothing else added to it? No. Let's see. MN Roots says, You answered my question last week about my clones drooping after transplant. I overwatered them, no water for three days, and now they're praying. So I'm watering every two days now until bloom. There you go, man. I love it. Too much water, not enough. It's That's the most common uh, issues, you know, when it comes to, like, what's going on with my plant? Sometimes it's too much or just not enough. This plant really needs that sweet spot. And you got to read the plant and the plant and the environment that the plant is in to understand what it's um, what it needs are and how much of that water it could drink, you know, how fast. Find that harmonious balance and plants will, will show you that they, they appreciate it. see here i'm in thailand from california i'm going to take some cuts soon for the first time if i join i can show you the plants and ask you a question yeah if you join the team clonecoach.com grab the sops put them to use on your cloning session and questions come up 100 percent. you could reach out um that's the whole point because we'll also have a basis to work off of because if you're not using the sops you're, you could be off in so many ways where it just doesn't make sense to just try to pick all those things. Grab the SOPs. You're 80 to 90% there. And that last 10, 20% is available to you as a resource to make sure you get that 100% results that you're looking for. Let's see here. We got South Dakota, Illinois. Let's see here. Another question pop up. Do you split your stems while cloning from Canna Cota? I don't. If you're talking like that, the stem itself, like split it into two, like slice it down the middle. No, I don't. Because um, then, you know, plugging that into a cube, it's a big open wound. Um, I don't do it. No. A Rich says, what's good, clone God? Peace, God. You guys watch, uh, what's that show? Wu-Tang? Wu-Tang on Hulu? Who watches that? Let's see here. Also here from South Dakota, not San Diego. We appreciate your knowledge. Everyone is super new to this, so our clone team appreciates you. That's awesome. I love it. You know, I've been, I've managed a lot of nurseries. I've managed a lot of crews. And... You know, this this is a could be a big piece for for you know clone teams, nursery operators, um, as a tool. I mean, so much money gets spent and they grow, but if you have these SOPs to implement, you'll you'll be getting the best results, and it's knowledge that you keep with you forever, the rest of your career. Let's see here. Travis Allen says, "Would you ever top a clone still in the plug before transplanting?" That's a good question. Interesting. Um, I don't do it on a, a, a normal go-to basis, but would I ever? I will only top a clone if the next defining nodes are there to where you could separate, you could create a separation between the newest node and the next node, the meristem and the next node down, and it's defined enough to where you could separate it and remove that meristem top and leave the one, two, three nodes behind, then yeah, you could. But 
you know, if your clone isn't developed enough during the rooting process to leave the proper topping behind, I just wait because I'll, I'll get it done within seven or 10 days after, after the rooting process anyways. So, you know, it doesn't happen too far uh, after that. But good question. I like it. Let's see here. Do you ignore pH runoff in cocoa? Uh, yeah, I guess like I do in the sense of like, if I know I am fully, you know, uh, if I, during my inoculants every two weeks, I'm getting a full saturation with, you know, probably 20% runoff. Um, and I get some runoff throughout the process. So where like nothing's really accumulating, um, in my cocoa. Then I then I don't then I do ignore it um, for better or for worse, but it's because the rest of the plant and everything is working so 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 well. So there's really um, no signs of issues or stress there. Um, so you know, and like when I make my nutrient mixes, if it lands close enough, like a five eight five nine six one six zero, oh, if it lands anywhere in that acceptable range, I don't adjust to try to bring it up or da or down point one or point two. Or anything like that. I just I just send it. So maybe that helps with that little bit of fluctuation of you know not everything being so so stagnant as well. Good question. A rich, a rich one 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 one. Let's see here. Let's see here. What do we got? Just joined. If you're just joining in, well, let us know where you're joining in from. We're gonna be doing the uh, the winner right now for the random number little game we got going on. We're going to be doing that winner here shortly. Let's see. Let me keep scrolling down, see how far back I am in this chat here. How low on the mother donut plant is a good selection still? From Desert Desert Yogi. How low on the mother plant is a good selection still? I would say about halfway, which I would call like stage two, um, where you take your initial tops and then that next set, you'll probably have some either a thinner um, full size clones or um, you have to take like cheater cuts to where you're going to like, it's where you cut before and you're going to cut below that. So you're going to have a stem and like that cut spot. And then like, you know, you get a little length in that little cut spot if this newest growth, newest growth isn't long enough, like a full size clone. Um, that's about as far down as I go. If you're... Um, if it's just for internal use and that little, you know, difference in that secondary clone, no issue. If you if you're selling to a market or to customers, then I just lean towards consistency, so I don't take them. Um, I just let them get a little bit bigger to the full size consistent clone. Good question. Let's see here. Could topping the clone while wa while waiting to root help push hormones into the other end to make roots? Hmm. Ned, Ned Denver. Could topping a clone while waiting to root help push hormones to the other end to make roots? I would say no. Because those same hormones that are at the, the tips of the root growth are the same auxins, the same hormones that are at the meristem tip growth as well. So if you remove that top, you're going to tell the plant it needs extra hormones on top and on bottom, not just on bottom. So I would think, you know, it's, it's twice as much of a demand for, for that rooting hormone um, that's naturally occurring at this newest growth because it's the same hormone at the meristem tip and the same hormone at the, the root growth tip. So I like that. That's a good question. Let's see here. We got someone from Wine Country, Sonoma County. Great wine up there. See, Real California Herb says, wouldn't it just be at the plant that, and it's pro, what, and it's process? See, A. Rich says, what PPM or EC do you give your clones when mixing nutrients? Um, it depends on the environment and the lighting of my mother plants, but I figure that out first. Um, it's going to be anywhere between, you know, 2.5 to 3.0, um, depending on a few variables and factors. And then um, I continue that throughout the cloning process. Let's see here. Real California Herbs says clones or seedlings? 
Seedlings for the vigor, but not for the time and uh, resources it takes to find a winner. And clone for the the speed and um, you know the the access and ability there. Let's see here. Real, Cal Real California Herb says, "Wouldn't it just set back the plant and its process?" Yeah, I think in reference to that question about uh, topping the clone to help the the, the roots pop through, um, you know, both sides of the plant. Well, look, guys. And if you're just joining in, let us know where you're joining in from. Even though Grow Michigan, I'm pretty sure you're from Michigan because I remember that handle from joining at one point or another on another episode. But we're about to do the, let's see here, the, let me see. You know, I haven't done this before. The Dessert Yogi wants to join the live. We'll take a gamble. We'll take a gamble. Maybe that's our version of calling in, where right, where I couldn't get that quite figured out on the other platform, uh, the call-in factor, the call-in thing. Sorry, I was trying to continue dude's comment in the comment section about what PPM or do you feed your plants. Got it. Thank you. Uh, JLS Cannabis says, do you have an SOP for aeroponic cloning or is it just for Rockwell Cubes? I have a free, like, lit, little, like, mini SOP uh, on this my Instagram page under uh, guides. There's a guides tab. There's a little mini SOP there. There's a lot of also good feedback from people that are, you know, that only run uh, aeroponics in the comments there of those posts. So that's going to be your resource for aeroponic cloning, man. All of the media, be it Rockwool, Oasis, um, Coco, Pete, that's in my SOPs on clocoach.com. We got LA and Chicago in the house. Let's see here. All right, guys. I'm trying to see if I accept uh, a requester to join the live from somebody that's been asking some questions there. We'll see how it goes. But we're getting close to the end here. Clone Coach, uh, Clone Questions Live, episode nine with me. Paul, your clone coach. We got people from Chicago, from Canada, from Thailand, from uh, Costa Rica. We didn't get much like Southern America this time, or South America this time. But a lot of people in the States. Elias Foxtel says, I've been putting 50 clones per tray and I'm getting a lot of stem rot and weird blackening at the point of contact with Rockwell Plug. Can they be cooking? They're rotting. That's what's happening. They're rotting. I run 50 clones per tray. I've run 72 or 78 as well. And I make it all work without having any issues like that. Elias Foxtel, if you really um, want to get that addressed, address all that stem rot, address all that blackening, even keep running 50 clones per, per tray. That's not the issue there. Um, Go to clonecoach.com, use discount code 15K for 50 bucks off, and grab yourself the best clones ever, SOP. And if you really want to get your mother plants addressed, grab the best mother plants ever, SOP, as well. And if you uh, buy the bundle while supplies last, I will ship you a free case of trays. Cloning trays, rooting trays, so. All right. I am at the bottom of the chat. Let's see here. We are going to have to go through all of these questions. Let's see. Random. All these questions. All, all the entire chat to find our winners. Random number generator. Between 1 and 420. We're ready? Look, guys. If I skip you, if I miss you. I'm only human. I'm scrolling through a lot of little comments and chats, uh, you know, um, in the chat, comments in the chat. So if I miss you, my bad. But I'm going to do my best. If I miss you, shoot me a DM with a screenshot there. But uh, so I'm calling it there. No more um, Elias Foxtails. You'll be like the last entry since you guys just joined in or Green Sky Flowers joined in last. So you guys got a few seconds here to enter your your guesses i'm about to hit generate and once i do that 
entry stop. And I will scroll up through the entire chat to find everybody that's gotten as close as possible without going over. And if I miss you, shoot me a DM with a screenshot. All right, here we go. Green Sky Flowers. You got, you got, you got your uh, guessing. Let's do it. Generate. Number is 373. 373. It's time to see who got closest without going over. 373 is the winning number on this week's episode of Clone Questions Live, episode 9. I'm scrolling through the comments, scrolling through the chat, find our winner. The winning number is 373. We got a 357. My jur town. So 373 is the number. Ooh, 377. Nice. Close, close, close. 373 is a winning number. 397. Nope. 384. Close. 210. 420. 226. No, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. 102. Nope. 347. 314. 234. 419. 380. Nope. 373 is the winning number. And right now, the closest without going over is 357. Let's see here. 380, uh, 373. 373 is the winning number. I'm trying to find our winner. There's a lot, of, a lot of comments in here, which I love, which is great. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for joining. Thank you for playing. 376, ooh, close. Nope, 373 is a winning number. Can't go over. Can't go over. And what are you going to win? Copy, a free copy of the best mother plants ever SOP from clonecoach.com. Grab your SOPs today and join the team and start making the best clones ever. 319, 321, 7, nope. Uh, let's see here. Find our winner. 373 is our winning number. 330, nope. 199, 276, 308, 256, 323, 17, nope. 373 is our winning number. 175, 179, 352. We got 357. That's our closest so far. Let's see 373. We got Trinidad in the house, uh, New Jersey, Las Vegas, San Diego, Boston, Massachusetts, Michigan, Oregon, Florida, New York, Bozeman, Montana. I think we found our winner because this is like the beginning of the chat. Yep, it's the beginning of the chat, and the closest that I saw was 357. I'm I'm gonna you know take another peek as I scroll down. From Jur Jur Town, Jur Town with a guess of 357, I think is closest without going over our winning number of 373. 56, let's see, 308, 276, 199. So I check it twice. Scrolling up and scrolling down. And if you just enter the, the guess right now at the bottom of the chat, you ain't gonna fool me. Fool me once. That happened the first time I ever gave something away. <laughs> and uh, they fooled me. They fooled me. Almost fooled me. The, everybody in the chat was like, Coach, Coach, Coach. No, man, no. 376. 373 was our winning number. And I think I saw... Ooh. Ooh, here we go. Okay, so 373 was our winning number. We have a 367 guess. That's closest. Your turn is out. 367 by Babe Roots. <laughs> I like that. Babe Roots. It's a cool name. With the winning guess of 360 with the with the guess of 367 is so far closest without going over the winning number which is 373. Let's see here. Babe Roots is in the lead. That has a good ring to it, huh? Babe Roots is in the lead. Let's see here. 347. Nope. Nope. I thought 357 was our closest, but it was uh, not. 
scrolling back down, scrolling back down, 420, nope, let's see here, 377, nope, 357, Jertown, sorry, you got beat, let's see, getting to the bottom here, yeah, I think that's our winner, what a cool name, what a cool handle too. Let's see, am I at the bottom? 77. Let's see. Hash, hash, Thetix, you can't find your comment. I went through it twice, man. I can't find your comment either. I did not see a 369 guess out there. Sorry. I didn't see it. I saw all your, all your other uh, interactions, but if you can't find it and I can't find it, I can't help you. But I appreciate you either way for joining. And if you find it, man, shoot me a DM. But we got our winner, Babe Roots, with the cool handle. And you're going to get a, a, I'm going to shoot you a DM with the free discount code for the best mother plants ever at clonecoach.com. Um, thank you for playing. Join us next week. We're doing this every week. Clone Questions Live with me, Paul, your clone coach, every Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on my Instagram page. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, it's a rerun. It's not live. Go to my Instagram page. Follow me at, in, at Clone Coach on Instagram, and you could join the chat, join the live on Instagram, and be a part of this, uh, the free giveaway. Every week, we're going to be giving away, I'm going to be giving away a copy of either the best mother plants ever or the best clones ever or anything else I have up my sleeve. You know, it'll always be something. So I love giving, I love giving back, especially with the, with the kind of support um, that is you know, that you guys are putting out there. So I appreciate you. Thank you for joining this episode of Clone Questions Live, episode nine. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Bye-bye. Let's see here.